I hear you. Okay. Let's do it. I got you. Good morning, Rev. Good morning, my brother. Good? Okay. Um, the, the devotion, the devotion to this lesson, matter of fact, I did ask you all to read it in Philippians. In Philippians, it, it, it says start at verse 10, but, but I'm asking you all to start at verse 9. 9, nine is significant. Amen. Good morning, sir. Good morning, good morning. Yes, sir. Good morning. This class probably has my picture. Okay, well, Lord, have mercy. How are you in the right place? You're in the right place. Good morning, Sister Gloria. You in the right place. Hey, hey Reverend, I, 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 told, I told Brother Lewis if I go over the yellow line to, to, to reel me back in, because I'm going somewhere with this lesson. So, yeah, but I don't think they started yet. Okay. Val didn't give me the cue, and she's still moving my screen. Okay. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, you are set, Reverend Allen, to go, so you should start teaching. It's recording. Okay, praise God. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. If you all will, let us let us call ourselves together. Let us have a word of prayer and allow the Lord to lead us where he will have us to go. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for another day, another opportunity to come together with God, to fellowship, to commune, to study your word. And then, Lord, we just ask you now, God, that you give us of our waywardness, stubbornness, O oh Lord, that we be vessels right now worthy of your manifestation and magnification. Lord, we just ask you now that you come. Give us that that we need, that we be better servants in your vineyard. We say thank you in advance for that you feel in part in our hearts and minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you all. Today, our lesson this morning will be taken from the book of Genesis. Chapter 13, Genesis chapter 13, verses 8 through 18. Genesis 13, verses 8 through 18. Our devotion to the lesson this morning is taken from Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4 is where our devotion to the lesson is. I would like to call your attention to that devotion briefly to look at chapter 4, perhaps verses 9 through 12. Verses 9 through 12, I'd just like to read that into your hearing. The background to the lesson today is going to be Genesis chapter 12. Amen. But Genesis chapter 13 is where our lesson is, or the printed text. And in Philippians chapter 4, where devotion is, you'll find there these words. I am reading verses 9 through perhaps 12, and the devotion is verses 10 through 19. Amen. The book calls for you to read verse 10 through 19. I wanted to include verse 9. Verse 9 here says, Those things which we have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, and the God of peace shall be with you. The reason I'm including verse 9 in the devotion is because the subject to our lesson today is marking transitions with an S on the end. Marking transitions. Amen. So that you could thank God. We're, we're about to read verse 10 here. It says, <clears throat> But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me has flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye liked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned, key word, in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content verse 12 i know both how to abase and i know how to abound 
everywhere and in all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Amen. Everybody love the next verses. I wasn't going to read it, but I'll read it until you hear it. Amen. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. I, I wanted us to focus on those few verses just because of the subject. The subject says, marking transitions, what God have brought you through. Look back, mark it, note it, what God have brought you through. Amen. There's a lot of things that we come through that we perhaps haven't given God credit for. Amen. Because they seem a little small. Amen. But look back and look at the things that God have brought you through that you know it had to be God. Amen. You know it had to be God. Amen. And, and mark those things. Amen. Because it, when we get into the lesson, we're going to see that there's a lot of things that happened with Abraham before God tells Abraham, okay, now, this is what I'm promising, that you're going to have this, that, and this, that. Abraham had acquired some things. All of us have acquired some things. And the key to what I'm saying is the experiences that you've had in your life. Amen. Some of them were so small you didn't pay attention, but there were some serious experiences that you went through. In Romans chapter 5, verse 3, it says, that we glory in tribulations, amen, because tribulation work is patience, patience, experience, experience, expectation, our anticipation, our hope, amen. I needed you all to catch that because I'm going to pull this lesson together for us this morning to make us see how all the things that he is truly promising Abraham, amen, let, 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 let me get everybody's attention all around the world. What he's really promising Abraham is posterity, not prosperity. Amen. I, I want to put emphasis on that. Posterity. Amen. And not prosperity. Posterity, for those of you who are taking notes, P-O-S-T-E-R-I-T-Y. Posterity. Amen. Posterity is the longevity of the people or the generations or the descendants that's coming behind you. Amen. That's why as we look at the lesson where we are today in Genesis, it's going to cause us to see him being called Abram. Amen. He's not called Abraham yet. He's called Abram. Amen. And Abram means father, the father of the exalted one. Amen. So, so in your personal Bible studying, it's always good to stay in the perspective of time that you're in rather than to jump over here somewhere else where Abraham is the father of multitudes and then have to come back and see that at this time he's not. Amen. So in moving into the lesson, the lesson aims today. I want to focus on them right away to cause you all to get those out of the way. The lesson aims today is that I'm going to read them a little bit different from your handout. Your handouts perhaps read, let me read both ways because I forgot we're online. The aims for the lesson is explain the context of Abram's worship regarding altars. Amen. Regarding altars. Amen. And Abraham, being that we focusing on altars here in the first aim, is causing us to see an altar is a place of sacrifice. Amen. A, a place of sacrifice. But now, let's look at what God is really saying to Abraham to sacrifice. When he says, Abraham, if you leave your kindred, amen, and follow me, I will do this, that, and the other. Abraham has to right away sacrifice his family, his friends, and his land. When I say land, I don't mean he possessed the land. Amen. I mean that where he was living. Yeah, all of us get comfortable where we're living. That, amen. And we don't want to move because we're comfortable here. A, a, amen. <laughs> I, I say that for the people in Atlanta. And when I go up there, I say to them, everywhere you all go, you got to get on the expressway. 
Amen. If I want to go to the bathroom, I got to get on I-85. Or go to the kitchen, I got to get on I-20. You know what I'm saying? So so things are so spread out. So I'm comfortable in West Palm Beach. Amen. When I was in Atlanta in the old time, going through Ponce de Leon and those streets was, to me, that was the quickest way to get there. But now on the expressways, it's seemingly different. So the comfort zone, that's basically what I'm saying. He had to sacrifice his comfort zone. Amen. And the background to our lesson, I'm, I'm coming back to the aims now because this first aim is Abraham's worship regarding altars. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing what you heard. His, his, his perspective regarding altars is that I've had to sacrifice land, people, and kindred. Amen. Amen. I had to sacrifice my family, my friends, and my neighbors. Amen. He, already he got to sacrifice. Amen. But those of you, matter of fact, look at Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12, which is our background to the lesson. Genesis chapter 12. And I just want to cause you all to look at what the Lord says to Abraham in chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Amen. He says to him, this is his call to Abraham. Amen. You're all familiar with the word called. Amen. It says many are called. Amen. But few are chosen because few, few perhaps maybe answer their sincere call. Amen. Here in chapter 12 of Genesis, amen, I'm going to come back in the introduction. Everything that I'm saying now perhaps is introduction to this lesson because it's important. Amen. But here in chapter 12, it causes us to see in verses 1 and 2. It says, Now the Lord said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. Amen. Key words. These four points here in 12, 1 and 2 is first, I will show thee. Amen. Second, verse 2 says, and I will make thee a great nation. Amen. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them. Amen. That's why I'm causing your attention to be focused on posterity. Amen. And not prosperity because he is saying, I am going to bless them. Amen. So the four points that we're getting out of 12 before we go into 13 is I will show thee. Amen. All of us know that in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, trust the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Amen. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he will show thee. He will direct thy path. Amen. So it, it goes on that he's causing us to see. I will show thee. I will make thee. All of us have gone through something. That's why I pulled in an introduction your experiences. Make sure that you marking, you noting, you paying attention to the experiences that you've had. Amen. Because here when he says, I will make thee, the Lord have taken all of us through some things that had we had a choice, we wouldn't have gone through them. Amen. Amen. Now you say, well, what did I do that, that I didn't have a choice? There's a lot of things you've done you didn't have a choice. Amen. You didn't have a choice today for the rain that's happening outside. <laughs> that wasn't your choice to make. Amen. It's not raining all over the world, but it's raining here. Why is it raining here? It's raining so that the fair weather people well, figure that I, I'm not going today. Y'all let me get away with that. <laughs> amen. So he made us, amen, come out in the rain to get here. Amen. And then he goes on to say, I will bless thee. I will bless you for enduring through the tribulation, through the trial, through the situation that I'm putting you through. You know what I'm saying? You endure. You persevere. You stop crying. You stop whining and going on through it. Then I will bless thee. And you will be a blessing to others. Amen. So, and, and, and coming on into the lesson, the second aim point is, it says, desire the spiritual maturity that develops through acknowledging God's activity in our lives. Amen. My paraphrase to point two is this. Spiritual maturity is acknowledging God's activity. 
Spiritual maturity is acknowledging God's activity. When you find yourself in situations that are so stressful that you don't know what to do, just know that God is in control. Amen. And we think about Romans 8, 28, and it says, and we know that all things work together for good. A amen. Many of us don't, 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 don't really know God. Amen. And that way we think that, why am I going through this? What's the purpose? But it's his purpose that we're going through what we go through. Amen. And then the third, perhaps, aim to the lesson today was practice worship. Practice worshipful response in recognition of God's presence and activity in the threshold moments in your life. Amen. My paraphrase to point three is this. Practice a worshipful response to God's activity in your life. Whatever you going through, this is what Philippians was going to make us see. I can do all things through him, but whatever I'm going through, I want to give him praise. I want to give him thanks. Why? Because he's maturing me. Amen. That's the point that it's bringing out in the aim is he's maturing me through what I have to go through. Amen. There's some key words in this lesson that I won't just, just spend time on the key words right now because I'm going to mention them in the lesson. Amen. So those of us who come to the lesson now, we're in Genesis chapter 13. Amen. Starting to look toward the lesson today. The subject again to the lesson is marking transitions. Amen. Marking transitions. Amen. The word transition. The word transition means movement from one place or one state to another. Amen. We need to be mindful of that. Amen. Transition. It, 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 the, the etymology of the word means to perhaps go over. Amen. To go over. Amen. So uh, across, uh, beyond. Amen. There are many of us who have been beyond, amen, what we thought was our limit. Amen. And we've realized that, Lord, I didn't think I could make it. Amen. And Paul is saying to us in the devotion, he's saying, I have learned to abase and to abound. I've learned to endure. I've learned to persevere. Amen. And that's where all of us ought to be. That we find ourselves, based on Hebrews 12, that we lay aside the, the weights, the sins, the obstructions, the hurdles that come up in our lives, lay them aside, amen, and, 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 and keep pursuing the race that's set before you. Every one of us got a different race to run, amen. The one that's set before you, that's the one that God designed for you, a a amen, amen, because of his purpose, amen. So looking at our lesson today in Genesis 13, don't look at the lesson yet, I just want to talk about Genesis. The book of Genesis is the book of beginnings. Amen. The book of beginnings is the beginning. Anything that you find in the whole Bible, you could find its beginning in the book of Genesis. Amen. And it would be good that if everybody that's perhaps studying, reading the Bible, if you would find yourself at least getting to know the first six chapters, the first six chapters of Genesis, then you can perhaps peruse your way through the rest of the Bible. Amen. But it's important that you get that because when we were in school, we used to cheat and go in the back of the book and get the answers. <laughs> Hello. The Bible is not a book that you could go in the back and get the answers, although the end is in the back. Hello. You need to know the beginning because if you don't understand the beginning, how are you going to persevere to the end? Amen. So, so the book of Genesis causes us to see that. And then here we find ourselves that it's a new beginning about to take place with Abraham, uh, Abram in his life. Amen. So we find that our lesson causes us to see here in chapter 13. It brings us up to verse 8. And I'll just run through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. In verse 1 of chapter 13, Abram leaves Egypt. Verse 2, Abraham is rich and cattle, and silver, and gold. Amen. I'm making this point. I'm making this point because Abraham is rich from, at this point. 
But the point that the lesson is really going to emphasize is after he separates from life. Amen. I'm into this lesson now, and I'm saying this again. Anybody with comments, criticism, add them in to help, 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 help us all with the lesson. When he separates from Lot, I'm putting emphasis on that because that's where the Lord says, now, Abram, count the stars if you can. Count the dust. I, I, I'm going to make you this, that, and the other. But he had to separate from Lot. Are you all with me? Let's look at what took place. When Abram was called in chapter 12, he was told to leave his kinfolks. Hello? He didn't leave his kinfolks because he brought, brought Lot along with him. Amen? And Lot is going to cause him some problems along the way. <laughs> Amen? Even after he gets separated from Lot. Amen? That's where many of us, and this is one thing about being in the body of Christ, is you've got to separate yourself from your blood relatives. Amen? You've got to separate yourself from your blood relatives because now you are not in relationship, you are in fellowship. Amen? And that's why the Bible makes us see him emphasizing you must be born again. A amen? He, he, he put emphasis on that because Nicodemus came to him and Nicodemus had a question. You know what I'm saying about, we know that you're from God because you couldn't do this, that, and other Jesus didn't even pay that question no attention. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. Amen. So that's the key, is here, you got to be born anew. So Abraham, leave your kinfolk. Leave them friends. Leave those neighbors. Amen. We have a problem sacrificing family. We have a problem sacrificing blood. Amen. That's my cousin. You know what I'm saying? Hello. hello. Amen. And, 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 oh, no, I know the Lord don't want me to leave my cousin. Yes, you do. Because he got some lessons for your cousin that he, your cousin won't learn if you stay in the way. Amen. A, 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 amen. 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 Y'all notice that later on in the Bible when it talked about amen. Lot and having been down there amen. in Sodom and Gomorrah, that Lot was so vexed, the Bible said that his spirit was vexed. Amen. He, he was vexed being down there with them people that were doing the things they're doing in the United States. Hello, y'all Y'all let me get away with that one too. A, a, amen. The thing that's going on presently in the United States was the same thing that was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And Lot had, of those who know the Lord, his spirit was vexed. Amen. We get vexed looking at things that we know are not right. But hold it. God didn't tell you to do nothing about them. Told you to come out from among them. Amen. Did not the angels bring Lot and his daughters and his wife too, but she perhaps had her reason. <laughs> Amen. I'm just going to throw that out there like that. Amen. She perhaps had her reason why she perhaps wanted to go back. Amen. But him and his two daughters came out. Amen. And then the Lord blessed them down, on, down the line. And I, I'm ahead of myself only because I want to say something about the Amorites. And I want to say this because God uses these people to help Abraham. Amen. And, and he, don't, he don't do nothing to them until late because he wanted to make sure that the time for me to deal with the Amorites is full. A amen. So in looking at the lesson, verse 13, it causes us to see. Now we ended the book. Amen. We end this lesson looking at verse 8. It says, and Abram said unto the light, let there be no strife, I pray thee. Now, the reason that I was trying to cause us to walk down from verse 1 to verse 8 is because there's things that's taking place. One of them is in verse 3, where it is that Abram journeys to Bethel. Amen. He journeys to Bethel, and in Bethel is where he built an altar. Amen. And he winds up in Egypt, and then when he leaves Egypt, he's coming back to Bethel. Amen. On his way back to Bethel. Amen. It's important for you all to know that today, that where this place was, it's here because, for one, it's the place that's called Palestine. 
You all hear on the news that they over there, they don't want the Palestinians or the Philistines or the Palestinians. I know what I'm saying. Those of you who, who look it up, you'll find out that the Philistines and the Palestinians are the same. A a amen. So, so, but you see the problem they're having over there now is what he's causing us in this lesson to see that he's bringing this out because this place that he's calling Bethel, the place that we are looking at is Canaan. Amen. You all perhaps need to know how this place Canaan gets to be here, that this place Canaan is the land that the Lord is given to the children of Israel as the promised land. Amen. Why? Because this land was land that came from Ham, which is one of Noah's sons, which is Noah's youngest son. Ham slept with his mother. And because of that situation, amen, there was a child born whose name was Canaan. Amen. Canaan was cursed by Noah. Are you all with me? So we find that Canaan land is the land that we see that the children of Israel go into that's flowing with milk and honey. But wait, it's because of what happened that God is now giving them this land and tell them to drive out the Canaanites. A -a Amen. So we we seeing that everything that's taking place is really happening today, today. And but we're not being able to see it today because we're only looking at Israel because that's the only name we hear being called. Amen. And the people that's there now are not Israelites. They are Israelis. They trick you on the news by telling you the Israelis doing this, that, and the other. Hold it. How y'all got to be here in the first place? Because when the children of Israel came back from Babylon out of captivity, most of them didn't go back. Hello? But the people that were occupying the land, they now called themselves Israelis. Amen. And call themselves Jew wish. <laughs> Y'all got to stay with me. Because <laughs> they, they won't say they're Jew. They're from Judah, but they wish they was. <laughs> wish. <laughs> Praise God. So, so, so here, verse, verse 6 says, Lot, Lot, Lot finds himself, he has flocks and herds. Verse 7 makes us see that there was strife already. Now, the strife is not just between Abraham and Lot as far as their herdsmen. The strife is they have a problem with the Canaanites too. Amen. So when we get to the lesson, verse 1 here, and the lesson makes us see, and Abram said unto Lot, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee. We got problems with these other people. A -a Amen. Those of us who find ourselves who have separated ourselves, amen, from the world. You find that not only you have problems over here, but you got problems over there, amen? And, and then that we need to be mindful of. That's why he's saying to us as our subject, marking transitions, transitions with the S on the end, because you are having to get over, get beyond some things even over here, amen, as you are having to get rid over and those things over there. Amen. So he goes on to say, brethren, brother, that's, that's, that's not me. You don't have a problem. A amen. Although Lot may be Abraham's uncle. Amen. Uh, a nephew. Amen. But when Abraham has to go get Lot out of trouble, he called him brother. <laughs> amen. <Yeah. laughs> and when we come in here in the body of believers, we are not those others, but we are brothers. A amen. We brethren. Amen. Brethren, the word brethren itself, it causes you to see someone who believe the same principles, precepts that you believe. Amen. Mm -hmm. Called brethren. A amen. That's why in Galatians, I believe 6 1, it says, if the brethren is overtaken in a fault, a amen. One who believes what you believe. Let ye who are spiritual, you who are more mature, that's what the lesson is making us see in our maturity. It's making us see that as God has matured us, we ought to be able to help somebody. Mm -hmm. a a amen. Yeah. And, and, and it makes us see how in this body of believers, one supplies the need of the other. Yeah. Amen. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah, you can see. You, you, you use your microphone. Hang on. Because. He wasn't that mature at first. Hold it. Talk in the microphone so the people on line can hear you. 
Great guy. Yeah. Abraham had to get to that point because in the beginning he didn't have that maturity. Mm -hmm. You remember when he went to Egypt and, and he lied about Sarah being his wife. So, so God kind of like uh, forgiven him for that, right? And so now he gets to this point, he has to deal with his, his nephew and he was having him in a mature way. Amen. Amen. All of it is a process. Yes. Amen. And that's the key that I want us to look at today is there's a process to learning. Remember when I asked you all in the devotion, I asked you all to read verse 9. Verse 9 in the devotion calls you all to see the word learn. Amen. Learn. Amen. And that word learn calls you all to see something that I wrote down last night. And I just want to just piggyback on it, being that it should come up now as Brother Gainwell is making us see how God has matured Abraham, or Abram, amen. The word learn, learn as an acronym, amen. The word learn is L-E-A-R-N, amen, learn. As an acronym, legitimize for the L, empathize for the E, Analyze for the A, realize for the R, and notify for the N. Okay, this word is so powerful that that's why Jesus, when the disciples asked him, when you coming back and what shall be a sign? He said, learn the parable. He said, now learn the parable of the fig tree. Amen. And that points us to this time we in right now that we need to know who Israel is. Amen. Who Israel is. And when we learn that, we learn that Israel became a nation in 1948. Amen. And then when we think about 1948, wait a minute, what about way back then? Well, that now makes you have to understand what a nation is. It takes three things to be a nation. It takes people, it takes rules, and it takes land. Amen. Notice that God is bringing them to the promised land. He brings them to the promised land. He brings this people to the promised land, but they don't have rules until they get to Exodus. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. See, see, it's significant. It's significant to see how God is taken through a process. That's why, Brother Gangwell, your point is excellent that it makes us see a process. Learning is a process. Amen. And in that process, we find ourselves that we are accumulating, amen, knowledge along the way. Amen. Yes. Oh, well, I don't want you to leave, but go ahead. Speak it to me. I just want to add a few right on. Yes, come on. What I was, I wanted to share, as you have said, we set a theme this year leaders, leaders, and worship. What caught my attention about this lesson was the unit theme, mm -hmm. Leaders Set, set Worship, worship Example. Amen. Then the copy, Marking Transition, mm -hmm. as you stated, transition is when you move from one state to the next. Then you are hitting home on learning and processing. I saw the lot situation as a transition. Amen. And three times in the background scripture and the printed text, Abraham, Abram, mm -hmm. builds an altar. Okay. He builds an altar after God says, Good be from thy king. Mm -hmm. That's a transition. You gotta move. Amen. But after that, the altar represents, as you stated, a place. place. Sacrifice. sacrifice. Amen. Then he has the Egyptian situation with his wife. Yes. Guess what he does after that? He builds an altar. altar. Mm -hmm. Amen. Then he has the situation with Lot. Yes, sir. He builds an altar. altar. Amen. Here it is, and I'm going to leave because we're not getting out of trouble. <laughs> we have many people in the body of Christ. Come on. Come on. That have yet to build an altar. That's right. After COVID-19. Right? Amen. They have no consistent place of worship. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me 
you, I don't believe you can tell God that you'll worship him on Zoom. I'm not talking about those persons. I got you. I, I'm so I'm so concerned now. If you don't show your picture, are I you there? God is concerned. What are you doing? Okay. Are you I there? Mean, you're the worship <laughs> okay. But worship means attentive. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, amen. Then let's talk about the ten fifteen. There are so many people. I'm so concerned. And after the transition of COVID, have yet to establish a place where they are going to offer sacrifices. Thank you for. Amen. 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 Praise God. Let me see. Can I reel us in? Praise God. Really, we need to focus on that word sacrifice. There's too many of us who are not willing to make the sacrifice. Amen. When you know that there is a season and a time in every one of our lives, we're going to die. None of us come here to stay. And we can thank God that we've come to a point where we realize who God is, that we can have worship. Worship is intimacy. Worship in the Hebrew is a kiss toward. Amen. That shows intimacy. It's time now for us to be intimate with God. Amen. And in us being intimate with God, it causes us now to be able to embrace the fact that, Lord, whatever I had to sacrifice, whatever I had to get rid of, praise God. Amen. I got rid of it. Because, Lord, I'm saying. After each process, Abram gets closer to God. Amen. 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 And, and the closeness that we get to God is the more things we have to get rid of. Correct. Hello. So how, how long is it going to take for us to get to that? It, to, see, 40 years, some of them say. I've been in, in, in the church for 40 years or 30 years and, and haven't arrived yet. The, so the what, thing, so that, then we look at the conditions in our society today and in the family. Amen. We look at the so, so what is the church doing? Hold on. See, see the thing is that, that that's good. That's good. Watch this. It ain't about the church. That's it's about God. That's Amen. And what but God is doing, hold on now, hold on. This is where everybody in here is gonna say hallelujah, praise the Lord. What God is doing, he's whooping you. Yep. Over there, because he's chasing those who he loves. Now, if he ain't, ain't nothing happening with you, you you in bad shape. Amen. Amen. But the, the amount of whooping or chastening that he has to do to bring you in, he's, he's working on it. He's working on it. We just had COVID, as Pastor made us look at. We just had COVID, and COVID forced all of us out of here for a while. You know what I'm saying? And those who haven't come back, you know what God doing now? He's sending the mosquitoes. <laughs> Y'all, y'all need to pay attention. See, that's why we come. That's why we come together. It's so that we can see what's happening, Lord. Lord, what are you doing? I'm sending the mosquitoes now. I'm gonna send the mosquitoes to buy, drive y'all back out the house. <laughs> oh, y'all don't, y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. Praise God. He said in Matthew 24, where them disciples asked him about the last days. That's why I brought up Israel. Is he said it's gonna be famines and pestilences. Boy, look at here. Amen. What is the mosquito? A pest. Right. Good God, right. man. Hello. You know, hello. Uh, you know, I'm sorry. Come on, come on. You know this. Lot never build an altar. Amen. And God sends him trouble. Like you just, like you just Amen. Amen. No of him That's right. That's right. That's right. Come on. Same thing. Amen. 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 Rev, I got a question. I don't want to think that Lot left on his own. God drove Lot away. You notice that God didn't come to Abraham until Lot left. Right. Sometimes only God will come to us when we get some people or some things. That's, that's the key. That's, that's the key. Amen. Now, now what you were saying, <laughs> God could be, or just could be, purging the church. Amen. Go on. I think Reverend Allen and all of us would agree. Flip it. Lot is allowed to leave if God's permissive. Yep, yep, yep. But now it's perfect. I believe. Amen. That there's a potential other side. If Lot had got itself right, true, true, true. Then he could have gone further. That's right. That's right. But he doesn't. He doesn't. 
Amen. 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 And 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 Z, Oh Lord have mercy. But but this is good. This is good. That's why we have to see. We have to see the 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 the, the fact that let me, let me let me narrow it down to what Jesus narrowed it down to. We have to see the sheep and the goat. We have to see the sheep and the goats. A -a -a amen. The goats are those who perhaps are stubborn, hard-headed. Amen. And the sheep, they, they just come on in the fold. You know what I'm saying? Now, 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 now. Some of you all might remember Psalm 23. That the Lord is my shepherd, shepherd and I won't make me lie down green pasture. Hold on. He the shepherd of the sheep and the goat. Amen. And both of them, both of them say bad. bad. Amen. <laughs> Listening to them, you don't know which one is which. Yeah. Amen. That's why it was important for me to talk about this word learn. Paul made us see in the devotion, I have learned. Amen. Amen. To trust in God and to believe in God and wait on God. Amen. Because when we look at what all he went through, he went through more things than any of us in here have endured. Amen. Amen. The whooping. Yeah, go ahead, Brother Wade. Who you learn from. Hey, boy, look here. Look here. Look here. You got a great point. You got a great point. You got a great point. The point is, the point is, in our learning, amen, first, before you start learning anything, you need to be careful who you be learning from. Amen. That's why, that's why in this lesson, this lesson causes you to perhaps focus on, watch this now, watch this. It might cause you to focus on the oak tree. Amen. When y'all reading your Bible, talk about the oak tree, and then there's another tree, the timorous tree. Amen. These are trees what symbolizes going uh, to a place to be taught. Amen. And here, you need to be taught. Amen. So who's the teacher? I really wish I was asking a question. Who's the teacher? Not Reverend Allen. Not no other man, but the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost is the teacher. Amen. And and that's why Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You know what I'm saying? You believe in God, believe also in me. He said, but I go to prepare a place for you, but I leave a comforter. And the comforter is the Holy Spirit. Amen. John 14, 26. Amen. John 15, 26 and John 16, 13 tells you what the Holy Spirit does is he teach you whatsoever things Jesus have said. Hello. So if Jesus didn't say it, the Holy Spirit not going to teach that to you. Amen. So that's why we have to be mindful of who's teaching us. Amen. When I hear people say, I need somebody to explain this to me. No, you need to pray more. Hello. You need to get more worship. You need to get your your, your fellowship with God need to get closer because he'll speak directly to you. Why and how? Because he's your father. Amen. So this lesson is making us to see how we got to get over some things. We got to get beyond some things. That's why the subject to the lesson is marking transitions. Amen. What have you had to transition from? Amen. I had to transition from the fact that I wasn't coming to church on Sunday. Amen. I was just staying home listening to it on the radio, uh, listening to it on the TV. Amen. But now when I make the sacrifice to get up and go there, now I had to put some things away. Hello. Y'all remember, y'all remember you used to be on Sunday, you know what I'm saying? Everybody waiting on Sunday dinner. They cooked it on Saturday night. Hello. No, now you want to wait. I'm cooking it at fresh. I'm cooking today. So I'm God have to wait. I'm not going to church. I'm cooking dinner. Y'all not here. Y'all let me get away. Y'all let me get away with so much. Hello, hello, hello. But he's showing us that we got the sacrifice. Amen. It's a sacrifice. Look at what he did for us. And I'm only gonna say this because time is not on our side. What he did for us is he sacrificed his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now, what is it that God sacrificed? His only. You, 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 got, you, got, you, got, you got to think about that word only. 
only mean I don't have nothing else. I gave you all I had. Amen. Amen. And I gave all I had for you. Hello. So, so now, what I had to get over. Amen. I had to get over my son. I had to get over my son coming. And then my son, he calls you all to remember that in Genesis 1, 1 and 2, it says, and the earth was void. The earth was void. He hello? And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Jesus is on the cross. Hello? The first three hours, he on there like you and me. But the last three hours, the sun refused to shine. So he went back in the dark to get us. Yeah. Hello, y'all. Y'all not here. Y'all not here. A -a -a Amen. That's why you can be so thankful for him. And that's why, even this morning, taking communion, you need to focus in on what did he do? That's why the Bible says, examine yourself. What did he do for me to sit here and take this bread and this wine? Hello? He went in the dark because that's where you was living. Hello, every one of us say none righteous. Hello, you living in the dark, loving the dark. Hello, don't want to come to the light because the Bible says men love darkness rather than light. Why? Because their deeds are evil. What you love doing is evil. Amen. But Jesus went in the dark. Amen. That you could be saved. That you could be redeemed. That you could be rescued. Amen. To pay a price with divine blood. Divine blood. Amen. God's blood. Amen. Go ahead. Come on. First of all, I just want to say thank you, Lord, for being with me for the things that I went through. When I was young, I didn't know what was going on. 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 I didn't know and I tell him, you think you just started? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I have to shut my mouth not to get into an argument with him because I know when God deals with you, he does it. Yeah. So sometimes I just shut my mouth. I said, okay, go ahead on. Yeah. Because I know God dealt with me. Oh, yeah. And he showed me things nobody could tell me. I know the hard thing that happens, but I, I thankful for him that sometimes he listens and sometimes he don't. See, that's that's where this lesson is bringing us this morning. It, it's bringing us to the fight of a choice, an unwise choice. Amen. Verses 10 through 13 is about an unwise choice. Amen. Verses 8 through 9 is about a proposal. Amen. But then with, after that, you make the choice, then comes the promise. The promise is verses 14 through 18. Amen. And, and I just want to make one little point for, for those of you who that perhaps are online and those of you who perhaps have your own Bible. Looking at verse 15 of this lesson today, verse 15 of this lesson says, <clears throat> For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give and to thy seeds forever. Those of you who have King James Bible, I'm, 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 I'm Reverend Allen, I can't help this perspective of my call. In your King James Bible, it says far and ever are separated. Those of you who perhaps have an NIV Bible, your NIV Bible makes forever one word. You would say they both mean the same thing. Well, there's a slight difference. When the King James Bible was written, perhaps it was written from written England, English. Amen. When we look at the NIV, which is something that came about recently, amen, it's written basically American English. Okay. So it doesn't make you differentiate between far ever and forever amen forever it means that at any time that you're there amen because he's telling abraham i'm giving you this land amen this is yours whenever you're there amen whenever you're there it's yours a -a amen and forever is is yours all the time 
Amen. Whether you there or not, it's yours. Right. You all know Abraham didn't have this land. Right. Amen. The first piece of land Abraham bought was the cemetery to bury Sarah. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible tells you he purchased this land from Ephraim. Amen. And here's my homework assignment for all of you online and here. Those people who were buried in the cave or the grave that Abraham bought were Abraham, Isaac, and perhaps Jacob. Amen. And I, I said perhaps Jacob because here's the catch. Abraham was married to Sarah. Am I correct? Yeah. Isaac was married to Rebecca. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Jacob was married to Leah mm -hmm. and Rachel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Rachel don't get buried in there. Leah gets buried in there. Hello? So you take the first letter off of all of their names and you come up with the name that was given to Jacob, which is Israel. Hold on. The E is missing. So the assignment is for you all to tell me how do the E get in the name Israel when E was perhaps not named as being buried in that cave. Amen. I know I'm giving you all a, a hard assignment. Praise God. Amen. Because only Reverend Allen, I, I've gone and challenged some people that I know study the book, and I asked, where did this word Israel come from? Where did this name come from? They ain't got no answer. So I'm sharing with you all, this name Israel comes from all of the first letters of those who buried where Abraham purchased this land called Israel. Amen. The, 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 the name of the place is Machpelah. Amen. Those of you, and I'll give you all this much. And, and he buys this land perhaps in Genesis 23, 24. And the names of the people in there are in Genesis 49. Amen. But the, the E is not there. I need somebody to tell me how does the E get in the in the cave or in the grave yeah. amen how does the e that in the name israel how does the e get there jacob is buried there because he told him don't let my bone don't let my body stay down here y'all take take me back and, and 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 joseph they brought him back and buried him in that in that grave but j is not one of the letters amen so how is the e there Praise God. I'm praying that you all got something out of this lesson this morning. Are there any questions? Oh, yeah. Questions, comments, in reference to the lesson this morning? Mm -hmm. Yes. I just want to thank you because this lesson really, really touched me. Praise God. Um, it fit in my life at this day and time. And um, God is so good that my transition is entirely for today. Um, one thing you said back in earlier is that when, when God gave his own begotten son, and we often think, we say things like, why did the God do this? Why did God take this? Why did God do that? But 16 years ago tomorrow, my own, my first born grandson left the uh -huh. And I, I was very selfish. I asked God, uh, why? I, I, I mean, that was somewhat my life in the sense of my grandchildren. And he came back and said, why not? Amen. He said, why not? He said to me, he said, why not? I gave my only begotten, my only begotten son. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Said, why not I, I not take what I just loaned you? Right. Right. So, right. Now, no matter what comes in my life, I never, never will forget that why not. Amen. So I just want, that just brought back memories. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And that's 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 what the lesson really calls us. Mark, mark the things you'll never forget. Mark transition. How God brought you from over there or beyond or across from where you were stuck. Hello. Amen. I I could teach a whole nother lesson for another hour just on that. Hello. All of us were stuck in something. Hello, we were stuck in something. 
Amen. That's why I'm, I'm finding myself, I'm, I'm, I'm emphasizing uh, 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 his current, Kamala Harris, whose name means lotus flower. I'm emphasizing how that flower go back down in the mud and every day it come back up pure white. Mm -hmm. Hello? That's what has to happen with us. We're in the mud. You've got to get rid of the dirt. Yeah. Amen. You stuck in the mud. That flower don't get stuck. It come back up the next day white. Amen. And then it go back down. And it come back up. So why do you associate this with Kamala Harris? Because that's what her name says. But I'm not saying that she's going to be president. I'm just saying that the Lord raised her up at this time because he didn't have no men that would stand up at this time. Hello, hello, hello. Same thing happened in Judges. He, Deborah came in the picture because the men were chickens. Hello, even Barack. Amen. Yeah. And you all find out that Barack perhaps was her husband. Mm -hmm. His name is Lip. Personally, I was looking for a barbershop. I stumbled across Brother Elrich. He was tough. I kept sharing with him, not our church, but our Christ. There were so many people poking at E to get him to come to their church. He came a few times. He has just simply flourished. Now, just symbolically, it means nothing. When he first came, he had twists, and uh, he didn't know what a tie looked like. And tucking a shirt in, ain't God good. Look at him, y'all. He looks like a Baptist deacon. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Brother E, for an awesome, awesome job. Good lesson. I don't know where he finds his videos, but I'm... Before I put another video out, I'm going to make sure I run it past Brother E. Yes, ma'am, since fifth part, then we're going to bring up our church school superintendent. That means nothing. That means nothing yet. Yeah, that means nothing. But but he has become acclimated. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. I just left Rome, so I can't, can't help but throw that in for free. Our church school superintendent, I'm so excited. I know Sister Eagle to see what's happening downstairs. Awesome class. We have young people. Uh, Reverend Allen with the Bible study. Awesome lesson to see what we're seeing here. I think, I think that we are on our way beyond where we were. And I truly believe God is pleased. I think we ought to give ourselves a great big hand online, on site. What a good job. Good morning. You know, it's, uh, it is a privilege right now to be up here. And as a brother E, just got through uh, explaining. I too recognized him. I saw him some like 20 some years ago or 20, 30 years ago when I was catering, I would see him. And he has a special, has a special anointing on him. And because he draws people to him and you don't know it, but he didn't know it. See, God is always working in our lives even before we come to him. But this morning we had in our downstairs is marking transition. And I've been fortunate enough to be here at this church over, over almost 70 some years. And what I'm saying is this, I had a chance to see the teaching that has come through this church. And I'm not trying to put somebody up, but I've seen two people who really taught the word of God. You have to be very careful in who you learn from. We have people coming, they read the scriptures and they got a new revelation and our people go flying off. But they're not solid in what they believe. You just can't go by a feeling. You have to go by the word of God. Now, if we look at this church, use your imagination as though you're hovering looking down you can see everything that's going about in history of this church or in this world and you can mark the transitions in your life and you see it if you look at when you got out of high school 
and a decision you made to determine when you're going to, next step you're going to go, or the person you met, and you look back on that time, you will see there was a decision in your life. When you look and you say, God, thank you. Now, this morning, the story was about Abram and Lot. What did Abram and Lot do? They had a confrontation with their herdsmen against the Canaanites. Well, what did Lot was mad because he the, the, they were talking about the ordering of the, the cattle, and this thing came up. Abram told Lot, choose the best field that you want. And so Lot being selfish, he looked out over the land and saw all of this pretty land. He chose the, the water, or uh, the water over near what we call Sodom. We all have read the scripture. Now you know what Sodom and Gomorrah was. But if you look back, if you had to choose, you would not choose the place close to Lot to Sodom. That's what I mean. You need to use your imagination and look back at the things that you've done to see what you have where you're going. When every time you have a transition, look what Abraham did. He praised God. Every time you have a transition in your life, you need to praise God. That's how we mark our transitions. That's how we go forward. Now we are praising God. And we look at it, and I was listening to uh, Brother E. We were just talking about, you know, in the book of Deuteronomy 6 to 4, where it says, it, it says, our Lord of God is one. He said, you should love the Lord with all your what? Heart, all your what? Soul, and all of your might. You make that transition. And that you mark it. If you just keep looking down at your life, look at your children's lives and be very careful in who you learn from. I mean, that's our biggest mistake. And I just recently, I listened to a lot of people and they say things and sometimes the stuff is good, but they'll mix something in that's bad. That's why you need to learn from people who are really God-centered because they can take the word of God and twist it and you don't even know it because they say I represent God but we want to thank you all this morning let us bow our heads oh heavenly father we come before you in the humblest way we ask father that we build altars who praise you in everything that we do bless today bless all of those who are coming and those who couldn't come in Jesus' name we pray, amen.